Hello STEM friends and welcome to day three of Towers Week. In day one, we did some exploration and some building. In day two, we were thinking, we were analyzing, asking questions, and looking at some examples of some towers. And today in day three, we're gonna be asking a new tower question and imagining some solutions because we're gonna be getting ready for tomorrow where we're going to plan and build one more tower. Before I jump in, I just want to mention that in the first two videos, I told you if you had any questions for me to leave them in the comments underneath the video, and I made a mistake. But as we know, making mistakes, well, that's just not a problem when we're talking about STEM. I didn't realize that you couldn't leave comments. So what we're going to do instead is in the description in the video, I will leave a link to a Google form where you can leave any questions you might have for me. And speaking of our STEM ideals, we're going to be focusing on two today, always be learning, because when we're paying attention and looking at the world around us, we can always find something to learn. And the second one we're going to be focusing on is imagine and dream. So remember the other day we talked a little bit about the engineering design process. This is the process that engineers use in the real world when they're trying to solve a problem. Now this chart was created by Tammy, the owl teacher. Thank you so much, Tammy, for letting us use your chart. If you're a teacher or a parent and you wanna know more about the owl teacher, I'll make sure to leave her information linked underneath the video. So we've had two days to do some hands-on exploration of towers ourselves, plus we've gotten an opportunity to see some examples from other people as well as in the real world. I bet if you look around your house, you can find even more examples of towers. In fact, there's one right behind me. I also have a couple of towers in my closet. And when I look at these examples in my closet, I can see that there are some similarities and there are some differences. The ones on the right, the purple ones you see, those have some deep shallow drawers and it's made out of metal. On the left, you see one that's made out of plastic and it has big, wide, deep drawers. I noticed that they solve different problems for me because the ones on the right, the purple shelves, are very strong and sturdy and I can put lots and lots of weight on top of it. On the left hand side, those drawers store a lot more bigger, bulkier items, but I'm not able to put heavy things on top of this stack of drawers or this tower because the plastic isn't as sturdy as the metal. So it might collapse if I put too much weight inside the drawers or on top. So is the purple tower better than the plastic tower? Not necessarily, it depends on the job you want it to do, right? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to be thinking about finding a question or a problem you can solve using some kind of tower. And your question might be something that's sort of practical, like, I need a tower that can hold my books or my toys or display some things that I've made. Or maybe you're looking to create a tower that can hold some weight. Maybe that can be a prototype for people and is particularly stable against weather conditions like wind or rain, or even against earthquakes. And another practical problem you might wanna solve is maybe you wanna create a set for a play or a story, maybe a stop motion animation video you wanna make, and maybe your story has a tower. Maybe it's a modern day version of Rapunzel or Jack and the Beanstalk or a brand new story you wanna create. So those are some examples of some practical questions, but there are all kinds of questions you might wanna answer. Some of them might just be to satisfy your curiosity. Now, I noticed when I was looking at some of the examples from yesterday that it made me start wondering if the footprint or the base of the tower, if the size or shape or perimeter of that shape mattered in creating a tall and stable tower. I had questions like, I wonder if I could build an inverted tower where the base is narrower than the top. So could I basically build almost an upside down triangular tower? Would that work? Could I create something that would be stable and wouldn't fall down? I also wondered if it might be possible to create a tower that starts narrow, gets wide, gets narrow, gets wide, gets narrow, gets wide. And I wondered how many levels could I build using that same pattern? I also wondered if it was possible to create a tower using something soft like tissue paper. I wondered how tall I could possibly make something with a material so soft. Sometimes your question or your problem you're trying to solve can be as simple as, would this work? You might also wonder if it's possible to create a tower that has never been seen before, or that is a beautiful sculpture of some kind. 
So those are just a few of the examples you might ask yourself. So the first thing you're gonna do today is think of a question or a problem you could solve with a tower. And once you've done that, you have to start thinking about what are the criteria and constraints? Now remember, those are just fancy words for what are the requirements? What do I need the tower to do? How do I need it to perform? And the limitations. So let's talk about a couple of examples. Let's use these shelves in my closet. On the right, these purple drawers serve a certain purpose. It's very strong and sturdy. It stands up on its own. The drawers are shallow and deep so it can store a lot of items and I can see them easily. I also might say my criteria for this is that I need to be able to stack lots of heavy things on top of it. And I bet when the engineers were coming up with these drawers on the left, they had some of the same criteria. They wanted it to be able to stand up on its own and hold its own shape. And they also wanted there to be drawers for storage. But you'll notice the drawers are very different. So their requirements might have been that it needed to have big, deep drawers that could store lots of big, bulky items. They probably did not have a criterion about being able to stack heavy things on top of it. Perhaps instead they were concerned about creating a set of drawers that would be very lightweight. And both these sets of drawers probably also came with size requirements. There was probably a minimum or a maximum height, width, and depth. So once you select your problem, you just need to also write down a couple of things that are important for your tower to do. So maybe it's important that your tower stand up on its own, that it doesn't need to be propped up. Maybe your tower has to have different levels where different little people can be placed and can balance. Maybe your tower needs to withstand a hurricane and you can model a hurricane with a hairdryer or a fan. We'll talk a little bit about that later in the week. And maybe a requirement for your tower is that it's never before seen or that it's particularly beautiful. When you're choosing your criteria, think about three things you want your tower to have or to do. And your constraints are really just the limitations. So for you, it might be the space in which you are allowed to build. It might be the materials that you have lying around your house, and it might be the amount of time that you have to work on it. And the next step from there is to imagine your solutions. So you can use just your imagination, what's in your mind. You can also think about the designs that we talked about yesterday, things that are in your house that are examples of towers and things that you've seen in the world. I'm also gonna link a couple of videos underneath in the description that might give you some more inspiration. As you're imagining and looking at examples, jot down a few notes for yourself or maybe sketch some pictures. We're not gonna do our big planning until tomorrow, so you don't need to do that just yet. Just make sure you don't forget about any ideas or thoughts you have that you are thinking, yeah, I'm gonna definitely wanna think about doing that tomorrow. I also have two Google Forms for you in the description underneath the video. The first one is to help you ask and imagine. And the second one is our question of the day because when we were looking at lighthouses yesterday, I found myself wondering why lighthouses are round. It seems like every picture I've ever seen of a lighthouse is sort of cylindrical in shape. And I wondered why they're all like that and I don't think I've ever seen a rectangular one. So what I'd like you to do in the question of the day is first, don't do any research. First, just think in your mind, what are some possible reasons it might be round? And then after you write down your ideas, then go out and research and see if the answer for why it's round matches any of your ideas. But I want you to try to think of your ideas first. It's good exercise for your brain. That is everything for day three. I'm so excited to see what your questions are and keep going throughout this Towers week. That's everything for now. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye for now.